Hello everyone. It is my pleasure and honor that Ms. Johnson allowed me to interview her under some very grim circumstances, especially around this holiday season. I'm here with Naomi Johnson, Montclair's well-known poet and artist of sexuality. Today we're going to talk about the tragedy of her son, Montclair's hip-hop artist, Sean Cos Mason, owner of Nyla, also known as Deshaun Johnson. It has been one year, five months, and two weeks that her child was brutally murdered by Wilson Romaine, a 62-year-old Coach USA bus driver who was operating New Jersey Transit Bus 709 on Broughton Bay in Bloomfield, New Jersey. Ms. Johnson, did you contact any political official to work with you? Yes, I have. I had contact three of them. Um, state assembly to the governor, to the president, um, to the council people from all over. Did any of them call you back? Um, well, the beginning of what ha when it happened to my son, as far as me advocating, trying to get law changes, only two of the, and I um, can't recall his name, he's the, I think he's the state assembly mm -hmm. um, person who contacted me, and uh, another one had emailed me. But other than that, that was like, I would like to say last year or November, other than that, I have not heard no follow up from that at all. What about New Jersey Transit? Did anyone call you from there? Um, as far as New Jersey Transit, no, they did not call me, they did not email me. There's a lot of ways to get in contact with me, but no, no one. Coach is an independent bus line. Did anyone from there contact you? Well, I know the day of. Um, my son, I don't, it's still hard for me to talk about it. I understand. But um, the day of, when we was having the, the wake, uh, I don't know how the coach was a representative, I don't know who he was. He called me the day of, like, Russian and eager to meet with me. Uh, he never called me like a day or after before it happened. He called me. He knew that we was preparing for the wait, and he said he was where I live at. And I asked him, "How did you get my address and my location that I live at?" He would never say. Mm -hmm. And it was not offering condolences. He was like eager to w meet with me to give me money to um, pay for the arrangement of. Um, my son, again, it's just hard for me to say it, but you know. I understand. Did the bus driver himself try in any way to contact you? Not at all. No, not at all. Did not contact me whatsoever. Not even an email message? No email, nothing. It's, it's as if my um, son's demise is, didn't mean anything. His life was no value. There's a lot of well-known information about the case out there, public knowledge. How long did it take you to find out information about the bus driver? Oh, wow. Actually, we just recently, since my son has been gone a year and five months and basically gone two weeks, we just recently found out information, I would like to say two months ago. You know, everything, my son, my son's case was closed uh, when I got a call from the prosecutor, mm -hmm. Erica Lou. Okay. My son's case was closed in, um, March and they still didn't reach out to me, you know, as as far as giving me information, valid information about it until again, uh, team investigator of my um, attorney had found out the information. So, so, do you think it was carried out professionally? No, not at all. Not 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 at all. The way the prosecutor handled my case. Uh, I mean, it's all online, so it's this. This is no top secret. If you Google my son's name, Deshaun Johnson, there is like tons of articles that's written about how the prosecutor handled my son's case, mm -hmm. and was it was not professional at all. Mm -hmm. Do you have any other children? No. Deshaun was my only child. I've read that you were in a car accident. Do you care to explain? Talk about that. Yeah, um, yes, I was in a car accident back in Wednesday, July the 18th, 2007, um, in Bloomfield, when a Bloomfield police 
car, they was chasing a stolen car. And the stolen car hit me head on, mm -hmm. which left me with a disability. I have nerve damage on the right side. I have involuntary muscle movement. So I'm disabled for the rest of my life due to the, uh, the car chase of Bloomfield Police Department. So Deshaun was very, very helpful you, to you during that time. Yes, Deshaun was very helpful. He, um, when he learned about my car accident in 07, he was, um, he, he had got few letters to go to college out of town. Mm -hmm. But he declined because he wanted to stay next to me. He just couldn't phantom of leaving me by myself in a condition that left from the car chase, left me the way I was. So when he did, he found, um, local college, his godmother and I, we had searched for college close by, even though it was like the last minute deadline, but we find them and we did what we had to do to get him at last moment to King and University, which he was accepted to both of them. Okay. I know there are a lot of articles about what happened to Deshaun. Can you explain, I know it might be very difficult for you, but in your own words, explain um, how you had to face dealing with the justice system? Horrible. I think the justice system had felt my son and I, and I said this to say the day that the incident when it happened to my son, my son, best friend, mom and I, we had to go and find out information. We went around the area. It was just so hard for me to go there. We went there like a good two months after what happened to my son and we spoke to the local people around there. Okay. Prosecutor never called me to let me know about the case, never did a follow up. I had to go there. They did not do the proper protocol of, as far as to nullify me in a situation like that. So it's like, again, it shows as my son, life was no value. Mm. You know, we go, we went there, when I said we, my son, best friend, mom and I, we went down to Essex County Prosecutor to them and talk to them instead of they probably notifying me. And the only thing they could say was being apologetic why they didn't notify me. So no, their investigation was so sloppy. I see you started a petition. Please explain to me about that petition and how can the word of the world basically get involved in the campaign? Yes, I started a petition online. You can, um, Google Deshaun Johnson petition is on change.org. Uh, the world can Google his name. Again, Deshaun Johnson, go to petition and to take you to change.org. And the petition is raising awareness. Again, this is information is already out there. So this is not any private information. Um, what I did, I compiled a lot of information about bus drivers taking people's lives by a dozen, by a dozen, just not in the United States, it's all over the world. This is a serious matter. However, the whoever the lawmaker or whatever, the state entities or whatever, they covered it up. They, they covered up, they deem these as accidents. But if you go on change.org to Sean's petition, you, you, you just be taken back to see how this is like an epidemic. That's what it is, you know. Um, a bus is just like a gun. Yes. It's just like a gun. It's actually operating by reckless people. You know, yes, there's a lot of petitions out by gun violence, but what about this? You know, either on change.org, the feds also had, I have an article in there saying how the fatality of public transportation state entity is, is out of control. A lot of people is getting killed by these buzz and people just don't want to, when I say people, some citizens, of the United States don't want change laws because they fear of bus um, fares going up. You know, um, again, I don't like to use bus. I use transportation because every time I see a bus, it just remind me of how my life, my son, not my life, my son, excuse me, life was taken. Mm -hmm. Not just my son's life, it was um, a young lady who lived in the same building I used to live at. Mm -hmm. Her life got taken in January. 2012, uh, January 23rd, her life was taken by a bus in East Orange as the bus was 
gone around a corner and took her life. Mm. And she left behind a, a three-year-old. And um, seven months later, I looked at that mother. I was just so hurt. I'm like, I just couldn't phantom. Not knowing seven months later it's gonna hap it happened to me. My son's life was taken as the bus was speeding recklessly, jumped the curb, dragged my son to his demise. For those who have not followed this story, what would you like them to know? What would you like to tell them? Well, those who um, lost a loved one, such as myself, I like them to, um, and when I say lost a loved one um, with buses, I would like to let them know to get in contact with me so we can advocate together and bring justice, you know, um, to my son, to their loved one, because it's gonna continue on going on if we don't do anything. But if we come collectively. Some sort of change can be made. Some sort of change can be made. No, it's not gonna bring my son back. No, it's not gonna bring their loved ones back. But I think there should be stiffer penalties should be held against these bus drivers. You know, not all of them, but some of them, because again, as you see, if you go on Change.org and you see all this information I compiled, it's like they're getting a free ticket. You know, okay, we're going to deem this as fatality. You go ahead and go back to work. Like the bus driver with my son. He took my son's life in July and back in September, he's right back on the wrong and another incident occurred. So I just like the world to know we just need to stay here and stand strong together mm -hmm. and just make these lawmakers change these laws with these bus drivers. If the bus have to stay like trains, wait for five minutes, 10 minutes to, till the, the pedestrian get on, mm -hmm. on the bus, maybe it. You know, um, I know what the prosecutor like saying, Mr. Wamain was not set to kill my son. Mm -hmm. No, of course, but in Passaic, a man, his life was taken, and his bus, bus driver was not set to take help his um, the guy's life, but he was charged, mm -hmm. plus a fine. You know, so no, this is how come they have manslaughter, which involuntary manslaughter, uh, manslaughter depends on what state you live in. And they have vehicular homicide, you know, and these not the intention of what they do, but at the end of the day, my son was murdered. I don't care what people say, it's not an accident. When I hear accident, I hear when cars collide together or somebody's on a, on a bus and their life got ended. No, this bus driver sped up, knocked my son down and dragged my son. Uh, it's not a mistake. Mistakes you can correct. When you take a life, there's no correction whatsoever. The person is gone. My son is gone. Every holiday I have to spend I, I, by myself. By myself. So again, People who lost they, their loved one with public transportation, they can contact me. They can Google me. They can Google Deshaun Johnson College Foundation, and they can see an email, contact. My information is out there. Phone number. They can contact me, and we can sit here and get together collectively and um, start some type of activist, some campaign, and get this together. Do you currently have a lawyer active on the case? Yes, I do. And um, I just can't discuss um, the case, you know, without him. I, I can't go on over the case, but yes, I do have a lawyer. I know this is your first interview, but have you thought about doing a documentary on Deshaun? Yes, I would love to do a documentary on my son, you know, because again, there needs to be a raised awareness about some of these reckless bus drivers. And with the documentary, I think this will help so people get understand because I know a lot of people when I was out petitioning, they said, well, why we don't know anything about this? Why we don't know? I'm just shocked. And when they go and change the org, they just, again, be taken back to see how much information I compiled. So with a documentary, it would actually shows, you know, not only that, the tragic way of people's life being taken and how my son was such a good young man, you know, and he was there for me and how these state entities just, just cover these things up. Why? I don't know. I mean, even if you go on my, my blog, Sawality, I have an article up there 
and it talks about the prosecutor, it talks about, asks question, why do they do what they do? And again, I have no answer for that, but yes, I, a documentary, I would love to do a documentary. You'll be open to it. Yeah, I will be open to it, yes. I've been uh, actively following the story, and there's quite a bit of information out there on Deshaun. In addition to the petition that you started, is there not also a foundation? Yes. Um, fans and family, we got together and we started a, a foundation, the Deshaun Johnson College Scholarship Foundation, in honor of my son. And. Um, Excuse me, just yeah, it is um, it's just, just have some water. Uh, I tissue, there's tissue, um, you know, and Yeah, we started a foundation in Deshaun's name. And um, with the foundation, we have like three mission statements. One is to raise awareness about some of these reckless bus driver, to push difficulties and laws um, if these bus drivers stay are fined, even imprisonment you know, to really make them think about what are they doing instead of getting a slap on the wrist and go back to work. So that's one fold of the Deshaun Johnson Foundation mission statement, raise awareness of reckless bus driving because a lot of people don't know about it. The other one is um, starting scholarship, putting young adults in college because it's hard to um, go to pay your way through college. And as a college grad, you know, we look for those scholarships to help us because sometimes, you know, we have people who's unfortunate to pay for it. So that's the Sean Mission statement is to um, do fundraising to raise money to put somebody through college. And, and the third one is um, the bereavement. Mm -hmm for parents such as myself who lost their children. It's very difficult when you wake up and your child is no longer there. And so we are starting like a support system for bereaved parents. And um, to actually both to consult each other because especially like me I have no one my son was all I had mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know I mean losing a child whether you have one or five hundred which I know a lot of people don't have five hundred but one or two you know losing a child is very it's, it's, it's something that no parent sure have to face especially when you lose your child in the hand of someone else Ms. Johnson I have just one more question for you. I certainly do thank you for this opportunity to interview you. In your own words, Deshaun Johnson seemed to be a remarkable young man. In your own words, how would you, what would you say about him? Well, my son, he was a very compassionate young man. He was a loving young man. Um, college grad. He had, of course, music, Sean Cosh Mason, hip-hop artist. Um, he was just a charming guy that I miss dearly, my son and his friends. They, they missed him so much, so it's like hard. You know, somebody who's so so young and you think why something so nice like a young man like this, why it happened, happened to them. Mm -hmm. Special 
on the hand of somebody and it is hurtful when your justice system fail you, you know, when you think, um, are they for the victim or for the criminal? You know, my son is very missed and there's not one night that I don't think about my son. You know, and, excuse me. It's okay. I know I miss my son. And it just hurt that these prosecutors and these some of the the politician turned in a blind eye. You know, uh, offense or assault about blindness. I'm not trying to assault anybody with their disability, but just turn it, just just not even paying attention, just not even dressing. I guess being that something so local like this don't get that much attention. If it was national, people would be knocking down the doors. And I thank you for taking your time out. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. To interview me, <clears throat> at least to get what I have to say out. Because again, this is, this is very important. People must know that this is a serious problem, a major problem. Um, and with the Deshaun Johnson Foundation, you know, again, we, we, we have an event, I like to say. Uh, March the 5th at the Brownstone and it's my son's birthday as well March the 5th and we gone to recognize um, state leader community leaders you know as one I like to name Bob Russo he has been very a good advocate for me very helpful and uh, Montclair High School they started the Sean Memorial Scholarship and they are going to uh, hopefully be there. King University started Memorial Deshaun Johnson Scholarship at Essex County College. So the event is going to be great. It's going to be big. And you're welcome to be there with us to, so I don't say celebrate, but actually recognize. And again, make a, a student dream come true to raise money and put another student like we did. Malik Wright with Montclair High School. He got the first Deshaun Memorial Scholarship. And so this is why this is event is so important so we can raise money and put someone else through college. Great. Thank you so much for your time today. You're welcome. Thank you. It's been a pleasure.